Hello, I'm Paul Sega, President of Albion Devices. I'm going to talk about an important tool for improving the performance of precision industrial shop floor gauges, that is, temperature compensation. First, a little about our company. We were founded in 1988. We were the first company to make a concerted effort to address the problem of thermal expansion as it affects shop floor gauges. Since then, we've developed many products. We've had hundreds of successful applications and many, many satisfied customers. Why compensate for temperature? Well, as you can see from the pictures at the bottom of the screen, temperature can cause dimensions to vary. So by eliminating those variations, we can improve the accuracy of our measurements. The result is that we get better customer acceptance, product conformance, gauge correlation, and many other benefits. Remember, consistent accuracy is what we're looking for, not just precision. Accuracy groups your measurements at the center of your target. So if you compensate for the effects of temperature, you can maintain your gauge R&R &R on the shop floor. Remember, gauge R&R &R studies are done at stable temperature, but on the shop floor, temperatures vary. So if you use temperature compensation, your measurements are corrected so that they always conform to the international standard temperature of 68 degrees or 20 degrees centigrade. Here's a few of our products. They, they have been developed over the years in, and these pictures are shown in chronological, chronological order. We started off with a snap gauge which actually was used in the railroad industry and then we developed various different uh, products from there. Descending all the way down to our latest development, the Fireball Digital Temperature Sensors and Measurement Probes and DigiGauge software, which will run on a PC. Here's some pictures of some of our typical applications. We've done a lot of work in the railroad industry, so you'll see down the bottom left-hand side there, a picture of a, a bearing gauge. But the other applications are typically used uh, in the automotive industry. The components of a temperature compensation system involve a temperature sensor that picks up the temperature of both the workpiece and the master, a separate temperature sensor that picks up the temperature of the gauge, various connecting cables and then a controller or a PC. Typically we try to put the workpiece temperature sensor uh, up near where the dimensions are being measured. Then we'll put the separate gauge sensor in the gauge fixture or gauge head uh, so as to pick up a representative temperature of that fixture. Note that we also recommend careful gauge design so as to minimize contact between the gauge and the workpiece. The principles we use to compensate for the effects of temperature involve taking separate temperatures of the workpiece, of the master and the gauge, applying separate coefficients of expansion for the workpiece, the master and the gauge, feeding the nominal size because the workpiece coefficients are express, expressed as a, a factor of nominal size. Uh, the compensation algorithm then calculates an offset which is output to the host gauge. Uh, we generally use linear coefficients of expansion because in the temperature ranges, ranges that are seen on the shop floor um, Generally speaking, the materials expand at a linear rate. It's true that at extreme temperatures, as is shown by this graph, you can get some non-linearity in the coefficients of expansion. But within the, the area uh, of temperatures that we see on the shop floor, uh, you'll see as was shown in the graph, uh, coefficients tend to be pretty linear. We actually prefer to talk about correction coefficients because in a gauge system uh, there are many variables and quite often many different materials. Um, so a strict handbook coefficient of expansion may not be the most accurate uh, correction coefficient. So we, we use a process called characterization. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute. Uh, but that characterization allows us to determine a correction coefficient that, that uh, corrects for all the evils. 
So, characterization. What we do in characterization is we determine empirically the correction coefficient. And we do that by patiently heating and cooling parts, masters, and gauge independently while taking measurements. This means if we call uh, the workpiece, the master, and the gauge the three elements of a measurement system, what we will do is we will control two elements uh, at a stable temperature and vary the temperature of the third element. Uh, then we can attribute any change in size to the coefficient of expansion or correction coefficient of that third element. And we have in our software package DigiGauge, we have a screen which allows us to capture that data while heating and cooling apart uh, so that it will calculate the average correction coefficient, which can then be put into the algorithm. As far as the operator is concerned, temperature compensation typically operates in the background. Uh, once it's been set up correctly, um, the system will pick up the temperature of the master when the gauge is zeroed. It will remember the temperature of the master and correct for that. It will then monitor the temperature of workpieces and monitor any change in the temperature of the gauge fixture. And the net result will be that it will correct for all of those variations and output a, an offset that will correct the dimension to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees centigrade. A note about temperature sensors. Uh, sensors tend to have to compromise between speed and durability, so they tend to be fairly robust in their build, otherwise they'll wear out very quickly. Um, the result is that it can take a second or two for the sensor to sense a change in temperature uh, that can be used. And the response curve shown on the bottom is very typical. When you apply temperature compensation successfully, you can get pretty dramatic results. The data shown in these charts here shows a dramatic improvement in CPK, CPK values. You can see the CPK values shown in the charts. Uh, and this was achieved simply by putting temperature compensation on inspection gauge. We now uh, offer digital temperature sensors and gauging probes which can be used within our uh, DigiGauge software so as to basically turn any PC into a temperature compensation system. We have USB connectivity and the Fireball digital gauging probes uh, have a measurement range of anything from uh, one millimeter up to ten millimeters and are linear throughout because they are pre-calibrated. The DigiCage software has multiple capabilities. It can be used for temperature compensation offset output only or it can be used uh, so as to display gauging as well. It can be figured to output that offset to other gauging software with the cooperation of a software vendor and includes the characterization routine that we showed before. So it becomes a complete temperature compensation system. You can combine up to eight temperature sensors or eight uh, gauging probes. And as said before, it runs in the background interfacing the customer's preferred host SPC or gauging software. And that about sums it up. I wish to thank you very much for watching this.